Welcome back to Guna Fanzine TV. Here's Arsenal legend Lee Dixon on Mikel Arteta. You just touched on Mikel Arteta there, obviously. A lot's happened since the last time we had a chat, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, where do we start, really? But um, what's your take on Mikel? I mean, I, I've interviewed him a couple of times and um, been in press yeah. conferences with him. Very, very impressive bloke on my part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think he's all, he, he, he deals with the media and, and the questions brilliantly well. I think he's, I don't know him personally. Um, I he obviously wasn't there. Um, I know people who know him, know, I know what they think about his football intelligence. He's, you don't get to be um, in Pep's uh, backroom staff if you if you don't know what you're doing and um, and you haven't got something to add. And he's clearly had something to add at Manchester City. He's stepped into a different role now, and that and you know the the, the time will tell whether he's he's got what it takes to 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 be able to utilise those abilities and put them into his new role. Um, it's it's easy it'd be easy to say well he he was coaching Sterling one on one. He's a good coach, so he'll do that with all. You know that, that he hasn't got time to do that now. He's manager manager of the whole 25, 24 players, whatever it is. So his time is it'll be very precious to him, and he's got to learn how to, you know, put that spread that over the amount of time he's at the club and 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 prioritise certain things. But been very impressed with how he spoke about the game. About I've watched him keenly from the sidelines and commentating. Um, and watching how he he thinks through the game, some of his substitutions or non substitutions, as as it was at Chelsea, and not putting players on when he thought he was going to, and changing his mind, all that's impressive. Uh, and I always say this, and I, I I get called all sorts of names for being um, a little bit more standoffish and like give me a bit more time to work, you know, to assess it because fans are fans, and I understand the you know the knee jerk, not necessarily knee jerk, but they're sort of the want and the need for him to do well and the team to do well. So as soon as something good happens, right with that now, and and that's not how football is. And so you have to just let let it be, let it happen, and then hopefully it repeats itself. And then it repeats. And once it starts repeating itself over three, four, five months, then you get a, a system of play, and you go, yeah, I like what he's doing. Um, and the players are responsible for being able to take his his uh, instructions on board their intelligence is is key to that and if they can't off you go sorry because yeah. you're not good enough as far that's how football is and lots of accusations been been leveled at a lot of the players at the club and some justified some not um some bit harsh uh some players that, um have had more than others um but that's the nature of the game and Ultimately, if you stay in the team week in, week out with, with different managers, you must be doing something right. So all those new guys are getting a chance now and the youngsters, it's, it's brilliant for the club and the way the youngsters have come through um, and he's giving them a chance and, and, and trusting them is fantastic. But it's still, you know, go back, it's still early doors, early days. Results haven't been brilliant. You know, if you look at, at you know, you can say, well, you should have won that, should have won that, should have won that. But ultimately, at the end of the season, he'll be judged and he'll make a couple of signings in this window um, and at the end of the season being given some money. And then you'll re next season, you'll really start to see the Arteta team take shape and that will either be challenging more and getting better and nearly good enough or it won't. There's only two ways it can go. You, you get better or you don't. Yeah. Um, and so that's how you judge it. Um, but I can you know, I'm a fan as well, and it's it's sometimes I have to step back from my fan head. And um, funny, I was at a game with Dave Seaman the other week, um, and we were at the Sheffield United game. As f he, he had a box, and he had all his family because he's you know from Sheffield, or a lot of his family's from Sheffield. So it was the Dave Seaman box, and uh, and it was I sat next to Dave, and I had such a good laugh and and good time watching a game when I didn't have to think about it because yeah. it was just happening in front of me I didn't have to work out why the fullback was there on his own and why I didn't care I was like wait just <laughs> goes, you know just, and, and I'm swearing and at uh, the players and throwing my <laughs> scarf and around and, and it, I haven't done that for quite a while you know and um, it looked a bit weird from the people around thought but you know I didn't care because I was just enjoying it as a fan yeah. and and we were going to win the league you know at some point during that game because <laughs> I became a fan and yeah it was brilliant oh no we're not so good now we're rubbish you know, so. but uh, yeah it's but that's the fun of my job I get to you know see a lot of games and analyze it and give my opinion so 
it's the second best job in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. I love, I love the fact that the image of Lee Dixon sort of celebrating an Arsenal goal is a fan. Fantastic. <laughs> um, just, just on what you were saying there, you make a series of really, really interesting points. Mm. To go back to the, the original sort of um, thing you were talking about, um, I remember the, the Man City documentary, All yeah. or Nothing, yeah. and Arteta was credited by Pep Guardiola with having a real influence in, in Raheem Sterling's rise, yeah. basically. Yeah. So you're saying, basically, with all the sort of Arsenal youngsters I've got at the moment, Arteta just won't have the time for that well, sort of one-on-one. He's not going to. No, as a coach, your your role is to support the manager, and if you, if it's a hands-on coach, I presume Pep Pep pretty is. I've never I've never been in training with him, but I've seen him him working, and I know through Thierry telling me when he was at Barcelona, etc. You know what he's kind of like. So, and and Arteta would have been supporting that role. Um, but it gives you a bit more free time to, to be able to go, right, I'm, I'm just going to pop off and do a bit extra with Raheem. I'm not saying that he won't have time to do that. I, he won't do that at some point, but he's he's got another 20... He's got... I mean, you can't even... Uh, just looking at a manager makes me feel ill, like how much stuff they've got fizzing around the head. And they've got... you know, the Support staff is incredible now, but they still ultimately, everything... All these people going around the work, you know, these like 300 people in this room doing stuff that you should be doing <laughs> all behind the scenes no, there's actually just three of them sitting there doing, doing nothing eat, <laughs> doing eating, nothing is ever eating pasties eating pasties exactly popping off to the camera shop um, so there's kind of like this this kind of uh, things going on in the background and stuff but as a, as the manager he's got a, you know he's got he's responsible for everything what time we're leaving on Saturday I know it's kind of like we well, might be leaving a bit earlier because of the traffic. So ultimately, someone will make that decision, but then they'll go, "Oh, boss, we're going to leave." You know. So he still has the information, um, and so the time of him, he might not necessarily have the time he's got had a, as a coach. So it's a new role for him. So the, the coach will be doing that. His assistants and you know, Freddie will be popping around and doing all the stuff like that. So it's a completely different role, um, and he's is he is he suited for that role? You know. He, he, he might not be enjoying it. He pretty much looks as if he is, but ultimately, when he the, the, all coaches sort of aspire to being the manager, and then some of them work out along the way. And well, actually, I don't. You know, they have a go and they don't like it. He looks like he's made for it, to be honest with you. Um, but he only he will know what influence he's having on the training pitch and whether he can sp- spread his 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 knowledge around the players evenly or he might just you know this area needs sorting out at the moment so and this it's pretty obvious the areas of the pitch that are, that are a bit more free flowing and a bit that need on the ones that need a bit more attention and probably the signing that he's made so far uh, uh, proves that yeah yeah just in terms of oh, you touched on character there as well I was at the Chelsea game the two all yeah. um, if you look at it from the outside you just go oh, you're Arsenal one got a point basically but mm. what was so good about that performance and what made the fans so excited yeah. was the character shown and the grit because yeah. you, you don't always associate that with Arsenal sides over, over the last few years certainly as a fan watching them in the away end and, and uh, the Emirates and stuff yeah. what, did, what did you make of that Chelsea yeah game? I was working the game I was NBC and I was you know, I had my microphone and I was, um, I'm not talking all the time because I'm co-com and Graeme Lasseau was doing it with me as well. So Graeme Lasseau? Yeah, we worked together at NBC, so he was kind of there. And any uh, sort of chat about the, the sending off? Yeah, no, we, we've, we've, NBC did a big thing on it before the game, showing all these, um, my tackles and his yeah. tackles on each other. And I have to say, mine were less violent. <laughs> oh, than was that his. that game? It was nil nil. You got sent off, didn't you? I know, like, I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I desperately tried to break his thumb when he shook my hand when I got stuck <laughs> off because he had a bandage on his thumb. And I went, oh, fair play. And I was, if I'd have got hold of his thumb, I was literally going to rip it. <laughs> but he, he kept going like that. He wouldn't give it to me. So, um, But we have a laugh about that, yeah. He, he did suck me in onto the tackle and let myself down. The only reason I let myself down was because I actually missed him. I would, have, yeah. I would have more more than happily took his ankle, but I missed him. <laughs> um, so yeah, we had a laugh about that. But we were doing the game and um, and that you, and the fans were just down to the to my left, mm. and um, you know you could see them all at the front even before you know the goal went in the equaliser the, the the fact that the they showed as much fight as they did was as you said it's something that should be a given but the teams and the and a couple of the squads uh, um of recent years have not necessarily had that so mm. it's becoming a 
it was uh, um, it's becoming something that's oh it's a bit of a thing now. Um, that was never a thing when we were play- when I was playing because it was always there anyway. So, but you know I'm not taking anything away. They seem to be coming back a little bit, so that was great. And uh, you know, and I shared in the uh, fist pump, fist pumping when the second goal went in. So very unprofessional, but there was no camera on me. <laughs> I put my microphone down. <laughs>